Hey everyone, it's Donnie, and I wanted to begin by wishing each and every one of you a happy Pythagorean Theorem Day. So what makes today Pythagorean Theorem Day? Well, let's begin by taking a look at the Pythagorean Theorem, at least expressed algebraically as it is defined. And it tells us that for a right triangle, that if we take the squares of the two short sides, we can figure out the hypotenuse side squared as well. So a squared plus b squared will equal c squared, again, representing each of the three sides of a right triangle. Or to bring this into today, if we take a look at things, 12 squared plus 16 squared will equal 20 squared. So what does this look like? Well, let's turn to AutoCAD to test the Pythagorean theorem by using some of the parametric constraints inside of it. So I'm going to begin just by drafting a couple of lines here, actually a few lines here, and we'll start with something that certainly will not work for the Pythagorean theorem itself, so a triangle like this. Now, with parametric constraints inside of AutoCAD, we can come over here to the parametric tab, and I'm going to, just to keep this bottom edge horizontal to my X plane here, or my X axis, I'm going to use the horizontal constraint. And let's go ahead and apply that right there. Likewise, I'd like to keep each of the three sides of my triangle a triangle. So I am going to use the coincident constraint right here for each of the three corners of my triangle. And I'll just pick the two lines there. You'll see it adds the constraint to that corner. And I'll go ahead and do this for the other two corners of my triangle as well. So now we have a functioning triangle, and no matter what I do in terms of editing or grip editing this, it's going to keep each of the three sides uh, coincident. So it'll keep it all connected there for me. Now, the Pythagorean theorem tells me that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's give that a go. I'm going to add some dimensional constraints to this, and so I'll go ahead and add one right here. And let's just call this a equals 12, so December in this case. And you can see things start to suck in there based on the constraint that I gave it. Let's add another aligned constraint along the bottom here, my other short side in this case. So I'll go ahead and apply that right there. And I'll go ahead and call this B equal to 16. And just like that, we have a triangle where two of the sides, the two short sides, are 12 and 16 units respectively. Now, if we take a look at the quick measure tool here inside of AutoCAD, we can hover over things and see that yes, while my side A and side B are equal to 12 and 16 respectively, that the hypotenuse side or C is equal in this case to a little more than 23 units. And the simple reason for that is that what I'm looking at here is an obtuse triangle. It's a 112 degree triangle according to the quick measure tool here inside of AutoCAD. And so with one more parametric constraint, we can of course test the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll come back over here to parametric and we also have the perpendicular geometric constraint that we can apply to an object inside AutoCAD. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and pick this side and this side and it will make this into a right triangle now. And if we go back to the quick measure tool, if all is right, we should see the Pythagorean theorem stand up here inside of AutoCAD with the side A equal to 12 units, the side B equal to 16 units, and finally the hypotenuse side equal to 20 units. So there you have it. Happy Pythagorean Theorem Day, and there is a look at the Pythagorean Theorem inside AutoCAD using parametric constraints. Until next time, happy drafting.